In this video, we're going to examine the Krebs cycle. Now the Krebs cycle has many names, so it can be referred to as the Krebs cycle, which is named after um, Hans Krebs, who discovered the pathway. It can also be called the citric acid pathway because the first product in the cycle is citric acid. It can also be called the tricarboxylic acid pathway because citric acid has three carboxyl groups, so tricarboxylic acid, or it can be called the TCA pathway. But for our purposes, we're just going to call it the Krebs cycle. First, we'll look at the big picture. So the where is the matrix. So just like the link reaction, this reaction takes place in the matrix of the mitochondrion. And that's because some places you won't even see the link reaction as an actual stage of cellular respiration. It's just kind of like an intermediate step, so it just kind of gets ignored sometimes. But we will look at it as two processes. So the link reaction and the Krebs cycle happen hand in hand. So they're in the same place where this reaction is happening. The inputs for this reaction are acetyl coenzyme A, and remember that's the product from the link reaction. So coenzyme A is that shuttle molecule. It's bringing the acetyl group to the Krebs cycle and drops it off, and then the coenzyme A goes back to pick up another acetyl group. So the coenzyme A molecule basically is like a shuttle molecule or a bus that transports the acetyl group from the re link reaction over to the Krebs cycle. Another product is there are three, or another input is three NAD plus, one FAD, which is very similar to NAD plus, they're electron carriers, and then one adenosine diphosphate. The outputs for this reaction are two carbon dioxide, so the rest of the the carbons in the acetyl group get broken down, so now glucose has been completely broken down into carbon dioxide. We get three NADH plus H plus, which will be used in our next phase, the electron transport chain, and then one FADH2, which can also be used in the electron transport chain, and then finally one adenosine triphosphate. The main idea of this reaction is that acetyl coenzyme A is oxidized to carbon dioxide, and the energy from the reactions gets stored in the form of ATP, NADH, and FADH2. So now we're going to look a little bit more into the details of the reaction. So the Krebs cycle completes the breakdown of glucose by decarboxylating, so taking the carboxyl groups off of acetyl coenzyme A, and also oxidizing the carbon groups in acetyl coenzyme A. And it's a cycle because the initial reactant, oxaloacetate, is the final product. So we can have this reaction happen over and over and over again. So the very first step of this reaction is that the acetyl portion of acetyl coenzyme A combines with this four carbon molecule, which is known as oxaloacetate, and they combine together and form citric acid. The coenzyme A leaves back to the link reaction like we mentioned, pick up more acetyl groups so this cycle can happen over and over again. And then the second step is that citric acid gets oxidized uh, to reduce NAD plus to NADH plus H plus. And at the same time, a carbon dioxide is removed. So one of our carbon groups is lost and we end up with a molecule known as alpha ketoglutarate. And that's a five carbon molecule. Then there's a series of oxidation reduction reactions. So another NAD plus is reduced to NADH and another carbon dioxide is lost. And then now we're at a four carbon molecule and then a series of reactions happen. So ADP is converted to ATP and FAD is created, converted into FADH2. And then a third NAD plus is converted into NADH plus H plus. And in the end, we end up with oxaloacetate. So we've come a full circle back to our initial starting substance. So that is the Krebs cycle.